Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Mesdames... Thank you very much, President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you to Sa Sabine Verheyen from the Committee on Culture and Education, the rapporteur, and to all of you, because this sends out a very s a strong signal for our young people and sport. When it comes to young people, let us say that they are the ones who have been the most affected by the crisis, but even though they have been greatly affected, young people young people have also shown great resilience and have uh, taken initiatives showing solidarity w which are impressive. But what can we do to make sure that we avoid a lockdown generation? Over the last months we've uh, tweaked the European Solidarity Corps and Erasmus in order to take into account these changes, providing alternatives, digital alternatives mostly to these activities. We need to engage in permanent dialogue with national agencies and young people. At the end of April, we launched a study looking at how the pandemic affected Erasmus Plus or uh, the European Solidarity Corps. It shows that in higher education, most uh, students manage to continue with their mobility. It's true that most of them uh, pursued this with uh, virtual and online uh, learning activities. Uh, 75 students went back home, while 25 percent of students remained abroad. We want to present a European youth study in the third quarter of this year, paying particular attention to the impact of the pandemic. This will feed into future policy priorities within the framework of the 2022-2024 EU youth strategy. On employment, in July, we uh, beefed up our support to young people with youth employment support, yes. In October, the Council adopted our proposal for a youth guarantee, which is uh, beefed up and uh, with the uh, upper age limit uh, moving from 25 to 30. Through the digital literacy uh, agenda, we've also looked at the importance of developing digital skills. And Mrs. Verheyen, it's not just about formal education, but also informal education. I'd like to give you one example, the uh, Digital Opportunities Traineeship uh, which will be extended uh, throughout the year in order to include uh, trainees and apprentices from vocational training. We also need to harness the opportunities offered by the European Innovation and Technology Institute that is planning to train more than 12,000 young women uh, between now and the end of the year with IT skills and business skills in order to make sure it's easier to employ them in the digital sector. And blended mobility and blended training will be part of the solution, but I want this to be clear. It's not to replace physical mobility, which of course will be irreplaceable and unique, but participants can start with uh, virtual mobility and then move on to physical mobility. Now, when it comes to the new Erasmus Plus and the U European Solidarity Corps, thanks to your off efforts and the generous budget, there will be more such opportunities for our young people. We have to include them more in initiatives such as the European, uh, uh, the Conference on the Future of Europe and the Bauhaus Design Initiative. I would also like to talk about sport. The COVID crisis has highlighted how important sport is as a source of economic activity and employment, but also for our physical and mental health. Big clubs have some leeway in order to um, shoulder the losses of the last few months, but a lot of amateur leagues and small clubs are under threat. So it's our European sport model that is in jeopardy. From the very beginning, we wanted to support member states with a set of unprecedented economic measures in order to support um, uh, mass sport and uh, the economy of sport. Uh, we have cross-cutting initiatives in order to invest um, 
in the fight against coronavirus, the sure instrument, and of course by tweaking the state aid rules, and of course there's the Erasmus Plus Sport chapter as well. Thanks to your efforts, this chapter is the source, is our source of specific support for sport, and there will be more money for this sector. We also have uh, regional funds, and they have the role to play. Let me uh, mention a sports wrap, which. Uh, raises awareness on the different initiatives that exist in order to support a physical exercise and sport. The joint action plan with the Committee of the Regions really comes into its own because it really wants to harness our policies on the ground and make the most of them. We want to carry out an impact assessment on the economic impact of COVID on the sports sector. Uh, the conclusions were published in November and it is very clear that the sport the sector has been gravely affected by the crisis. As I said before, sport has shown once again that it is vital in our lives. And despite the difficulties, our sixth edition of the European Sport Week has managed to reach out to more than 15 million citizens with 32,000 events. Within the framework of the EU Sport Work Programme adopted in December, we're planning to set up a group of experts in order to provide support for the recovery and resilience of the sports sector. Next week, I'm organising the first meeting, high-level meeting, on gender equality in sports. I also want to follow up the Tartu appeal for a healthy lifestyle launched back in 2017. The new Healthy Lifestyle for All initiative uh, will focus on intersectoral cooperation. Today, uh, health, sport, the environment, innovation, youth and skills have to be linked up and it's more important than ever. And this will be at the heart of our action. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention. And it will be a pleasure to continue uh, discussing.